This is really interesting, this subtopic, the big three, because we talked about the war in Europe coming to an end, right? But what's still raging in the Pacific is the Pacific theater of the war. So the war in general is far from over, but this is kind of an interesting subtopic because the final surrender of Germany that ended World War II in Europe, of course, splashed all across the newspapers. Everybody in, in America and everywhere else in the world knew that the war in Europe was over. But the bigger news really had already happened and very few people knew about the big news. Okay, So everybody knows the war in Europe's over by the headlines, but something had happened prior to that that very few people in the world knew about. Now, does anybody want to dig in their notes? When was VE Day, Paris? What date was VE Day? May 8th of 1945, right? Well, back in February of 1945, March, April, May, three months before the war in Europe officially ended, a secret meeting was held between Allied leaders at Yalta, which was, which was a resort city in the Soviet Union. So in February of 1945, three months before VE Day, a secret meeting was held between <coughs> Allied leaders and they met at Yalta, which was a resort city in the Soviet Union. Okay, who were those leaders? Who were those three Allied leaders? Give me one, Kasia. Uh, Winston, Winston Churchill of Great Britain. Another one, Sage. Um, Roosevelt. Franklin Roosevelt, President of the United States. And Brady, who was the last Allied leader that met there secretly? Joseph Stalin from the Soviet Union. Now, the whole purpose of this meeting in Yalta was to decide the fate of Europe after World War II had ended. So they were making decisions on what they were going to do in Europe before victory was achieved in Europe. That's how confident the Allies were that they were going to overrun Germany. So the purpose of this meeting in Yalta in February of 1945 was to decide the fate of Europe after World War II had ended. And what they agreed upon in February of 1945 was kept secret until the German surrender in May. So these guys were already meeting and planning on what they were going to do with Europe after they defeated the Germans there and Italians. Now, I'm going to tell you the agreements. important you know these. It comes in four parts. So these three Allied leaders agreed to the following concerning Europe following World War II. Number one, German territory in Europe would be divided into four occupation zones. German territory in Europe would be divided into four occupation zones. This is the key to the whole thing, actually. Now, what's an occupation zone, Caitlin? If, it, if it's a, if this, this is kind of an occupation zone, AP US history, because someone is occupying and controlling this classroom environment. That would be me. So, four occup so they're going to create four occupation zones. Who's going to control each of those zones? One's going to be controlled by, well, which ones, though? Not U.S. is going to control one. Great Britain is going to control one. Russia is going to control one. Who's going to control the last one? France. Very good. France. So each of the four occupying powers, Great Britain, France, Russia, and the United States, would be responsible for governing the different zones. So they're basically going to take all this German territory that was captured and lost during World War II, and they're going to divide it into four occupation zones. Now, there's only one that I'm really concerned about as far as where we're going later. And what's that? What's, what country specifically am I concerned about letting you know about the zone? No? No? No. What, what country, what occupation zone am I going to take? There's four of them. Which one do I want to really, which one am I concerned about? Germany. 
okay, the country of Germany, because you know through history what happens during this agreement ending World War II in Europe. What happens to Germany? Split right in half. And you're going to have West Germany and you're going to have East Germany. What's the difference between the two, kiddos? Which one's communist? And who's going to control East Germany? Russia. Who's going to control West Germany? The United States, France, Great Britain, a combination. But what's even more specific in Germany that is going to be really important when we get into the 1960s? Berlin. Berlin is the capital city of Germany. And they're actually going to split Berlin in half. The western half of Berlin being non-communist and the eastern half being communist. The weird thing about that is everybody thinks when they split Germany in half that Berlin was right in the middle and they just went right down the middle. Berlin actually is in East Germany. So you had a city, the capital city in East Germany, in which the city is half communist, half not, inside a communist country. It was very complex. And it's going to lead to some issues that we're going to talk about when we get into the Cold War, when we get into the Cuban Missile Crisis, all those types of things. So it's pretty hard to divide a city inside a communist country. And Berlin was cut in half also, the west side being non-communist, the east side being communist. And what did they do to make sure that people stayed where they were supposed to? They built this wall called the Berlin Wall. And it separated east and west. But the thing to remember is the city was actually several hundred miles into East Germany, which made it a real interesting thing. So that's the first thing that these Allied leaders agreed upon, which turns out to be quite an, a situation that we'll cover for a while. The second thing they agreed is that the Soviet Union would annex Eastern Poland. The Soviet Union would annex Eastern Poland. Now this is where we start making hay when we get into the Cold War, which we'll be talking about later. Now what would be France, the United States, and Great Britain's concern about Eastern Poland being annexed into the Soviet Union? that the Soviet Union would try to make that area communist. So the deal was that the Soviet Union could annex eastern Poland, but Stalin had to agree that the country of Poland would have a government of their own choosing. And how would that be established? By an, the E word, election. So it didn't automatically mean that Poland was going to be communist because they were annexed into the Soviet Union. When the Soviet Union annexed Eastern Poland, Soviet Premier Joseph Stalin had to agree that the country of Poland would have a government of their own choosing by virtue of a free election. Okay? What do you think Russia gave, gave back in order to get Eastern Poland? They had to give something. And it wasn't land. What was it? Think about what's still going on. What did Russia pledge to do in return for getting Eastern Poland? Help the Allies where? What? In the Pacific Theater. So the third part of the agreement was Russia would join the Allies, because they weren't fighting in the Pacific Theater prior to this, were they? They were fighting in Europe. So Russia would join the Allies against the Japanese in the Pacific Theater of the war. Now, Russia wanted a little more than Eastern Poland for this. They wanted a little piece of the pie where? Where are they fighting? In the Pacific. And there was a group of islands called the Kurlal Islands that Japan owned at the time. And Russia would be allowed to take control of those islands, the Kurlal Islands, from Japan once the Pacific theater of the war ended for their helping us there. They were going to get some possession in the Pacific Ocean. The Kurlal Islands would be theirs for the taking if we won in part of the spoils of war. So in exchange for their support, Russia would be allowed to take control of the Kurlal Islands from Japan. Now, let's think back to Woodrow Wilson. What was the fourth part of the agreement that came out of this meeting that would be established after Europe and victory in Europe? What would be created that Woodrow Wilson wanted so bad it didn't happen? Think of last year, come on. United Nations. So the fourth thing that was discussed and agreed upon in this meeting 
was the establishment of a new international organization which would be called the United Nations. So Woodrow Wilson would not live to see this, but it was something that he really wanted badly, and it didn't come into fruition until after the Allied victory in Europe following World War II. So, where we're at, that's the end of this test material, we're going to have a little review here, but we still have a war to fight where? In the Pacific, and that gets interesting. That's going to be, every piece of, every inch of that ground is going to be fought at a high cost, and we'll get into that in the next test material. Okay, here's our review, so let's get our notes out. We're going to have 15 multiple choice, excuse me, 15 matching questions. And then the rest will be short answer. There will be 30 answers total. Be worth three points apiece, 90. Okay, 15 matching, 15 short answers. So, we'll start with Ivan, because he's all over it. This is a tough one. We're not going to go in any order, so you got to think about this. This would be under the subtopic fighting in Italy. Ivan. Who is the man who replaced Italian dictator Benito Mussolini after the Allied victory in Sicily? Was it Pietro Badago? Pietro Badago. Very good. Pietro Badago. We will not make you spell that. Okay, it'll be on your matching. Lauren. Who is the Japanese admiral who claimed victory in the Battle of the Coral Sea? Who is the Japanese admiral who claimed victory for Japan in the Battle of the Coral Sea? My wife was in the canning some yams the other day. Anybody ever eat yams? Mm -hmm. They'll give you the moto, I'll tell you. Yamamoto. Yamamoto. Yeah. Admiral Yamamoto. Yeah. Hey, Maddie. The Japanese kind of set their sights on two islands during their attempted assault of Australia. What were those two islands they set their sights on? Very good. The Solomon Islands and New Guinea. Delaney, my dear, who was the American general who commanded an Allied victory over the Germans by capturing Naples, Italy? An American general who commanded the Allied victory over the Germans and captured Naples, Italy. Mark Clark. Very good. Kelliana, my dear, who is the American general in charge of Allied forces in the Philippines who was ordered by President Roosevelt to Australia? American general in charge of Allied forces in the Philippines who was ordered by President Roosevelt to Australia? No, he's in, the, he's in Europe. The Philippines are in the Pacific. It was too dangerous there, so President Roosevelt ordered him to the Australia. He said, I shall return. Anybody going to lunch today? Anybody by any chance going to McDonald's? General McDonald? McDonald's? Huh? What? What's the general's name that was in charge of the Philippines? He was ordered by President Roosevelt to Australia. Kelly Adam, my dear, who was that? Taylor. You don't know Taylor? Taylor. That's the first time I've only done that. I've only done it once so far. Michaela? Douglas MacArthur. Douglas MacArthur. That's pretty good. I've gone almost a week without you. If it gets bad, we'll keep track, and then I have to pay you 20 bucks if it gets up to five. Nick, and Nick Shriver found out enough. Okay. Sheriff, who is the German field marshal who fought the Allied forces to a stalemate in Tunisia? German field marshal 
who fought Allied forces to a stalemate in Tunisia. Erwin Rommel. Erwin Rommel. Very good. Okay, hey, Morgan, tell me the place of a Russian victory in which over 300,000 Germans were defeated on the Eastern Front. Stalingrad. Stalingrad, very good. AC back there hiding out on me. Who was the American general in charge of Allied forces in North Africa? winning victories in Algeria and Morocco. Eisenhower. Is that right? <laughs> oh my gosh. That's right. Eisenhower's correct. You gotta be confident. Hey, <laughs> JC my dear. Where was an area near Alaska that the Japanese were interested in conquering shortly after the attack on Pearl Harbor? Okay, an area near Alaska that the Japanese were interested in conquering shortly after the attack on Pearl Harbor. Remember they wanted, they were going to attack, their plan was to fortify those islands, attack <coughs> Hawaii, the east coast of the United States, and don't be very, don't be aloof on the answer now. Right off the bat in the notes. Right off. Oh, the uh, Aleutian Islands. Very good. Brady? Who devised a plan with President Roosevelt to attack the, quote, soft underbelly of Europe? Uh, Winston Churchill. Very good. Siobhan, who was the American general who led the Allies to victory in Sicily, knocking the Italians right out of World War II? George Patton. George Patton. Olivia, who was the major general who was ordered to hold the ba Bataan Peninsula and Corregidor until his commander's famous return? I'll read that again. Who was the American major general who was ordered to hold the Bataan Peninsula and Corregidor until his commander's famous return? Unfortunately, he did not do that and was forced to surrender, which was very shameful to him. We'll talk about later. Carter left someone in charge, told him not to surrender. And he held out as long as he could with his men, but could hold out no longer. I know you're going to be right on this. If you don't wane. If you don't wane from looking, you'll be right. Jonathan Wainwright. Jonathan Wainwright. Incredible. Okay, Hunter, what was the name of the air battle that stopped the Japanese advance on Australia on May 7th and 8th, 1942? The Battle of the Coral Sea. Battle of the Coral Sea is right. Harris, along with Admiral Frank Fletcher, who was the man who led the huge American naval victory over the Japanese during the Battle of Midway? Raymond Spruance. Raymond Spruance is exactly right. And Pete, who was the British general who led his armies to victory in the Battle of El Alamein, pushing the Axis powers into Egypt in June of 1942? Bernard Montgomery. Bernard Montgomery. There you go. Those are the matching. Those are the matching. Can you repeat that? The last one? Yeah. British general who led his armies to a victory in the Battle of El Alamein, pushing the Axis powers into Egypt in June of 1942. Betcha. Okay, Lauren, my dear. Operation Overlord, 
also known as D-Day in Europe, was organized by which American commander? Operation Overlord, also known as D-Day in Europe, was organized by which American <laughs> commander? Dwight D. Eisenhower is exactly right. Taylor, approximately how many Allied soldiers would take part in Operation Overlord? Approximately. Three million, that a girl. Three million. Asia, my dear, where exactly was Operation Overlord launched on June 6, 1944? Omaha Beach. No, that's that you're being too specific. On the beaches, which included Omaha Beach, on the beaches of Normandy. Normandy. Very good, though. That's all right. That's good thinking. On the beaches of Normandy, Omaha Beach has happened to be one of those. Now, that'll take us to Tristan. Which of the beaches along the northwestern coast of France was most publicized for the Allied amphibious attack, also featured in the movie Saving Private Ryan? Omaha. Omaha Beach. Very good. <laughs> Elise, my dear. President Roosevelt defeated which Republican Party candidate in the election of 1944? Thomas E. Dewey. Very good. Sage. After what major battle in Europe did German morale completely collapse along with any resistance they had left to fight the war? After what major battle in Europe did German morale